Welcome to today's video, which covers using trig ratios to find missing measures. So we are going to find missing side measures using sine, cosine, and tangent. So looking at example number one, it says find the value of x. So in each of these problems, I'm going to give you some sides, and I'm going to give you at least one angle. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to find a missing side. So in order to, in order to do this, we're going to identify which sides we have in relation to the angle. So in relation to angle 32, we have the opposite side, x is the adjacent side, and then the side across from the 90 is the hypotenuse. Now the hypotenuse has no marking, so I'm not going to be using it. I have opposite and adjacent, so I need to remember what ratio do I use. So writing at the top, SOHCAHTOA, we notice that tangent has opposite and adjacent. So I'm going to say that the tangent of 32 equals 11 over x, and then I need to find x. Now tangent of 32, that's just a number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that over 1, and then we're going to do cross products. 11 times 1 is 11, so I get 11 equals x times the tangent of 32. Okay, to undo that multiplication, I'm going to divide both sides by the tangent of 32. So I get x equals 11 divided by the tangent of 32, and then we go to the calculator. Okay, so please make sure that you have your calculator. If you need to pause the video, please do that. So what I want you to do first is hit mode, and then go down to the third option. You need to make sure that you have degree selected. So hit enter over degree, and then you're going to hit second quit. Now we can do 11 divided by the tangent of 32. What you're going to notice is that you have this row of sine, cosine, and tangent buttons right here. So those are the buttons that we're going to be using for the rest of this chapter. Now once I hit enter, I get x to be 17.60. Okay, so writing that down, we get x equals 17.60. Okay, so one thing that I would like you to do is just make sure that this answer makes sense. So let's write it on our figure, x is 17.60. So now what we find is that x is bigger than this side 11. Does this make sense? Well, I know that a triangle equals 180, so if I take 180 and I subtract 90 and I subtract 32, I find this angle over here to be 58 degrees. Because this angle is bigger than 32, its sh side should be bigger than the side across from 32. Remember that we learned that in first semester. So smallest angle is going to be across from the smallest side. The medium angle, in this case 58, is going to be across from the medium side. And then we know that the hypotenuse will be the largest. Okay, so I know that was a lot of information, so let's try it again with this second example. So we have this angle 34, and we're trying to find x. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to label all the sides in relation to that 34. So I have the opposite side, I have the hypotenuse, which, which means that x is my adjacent side. Now in this case, I have all three sides. I know that I need to use a, I need to use the adjacent side because I'm finding x. In this case, I can choose either the opposite side or the hypotenuse. It doesn't matter. I'm going to choose to use the hypotenuse. If I'm using adjacent and hypotenuse, that's going to be cosine. So I get the cosine of 34 equals x over 17. Now do what you did before and put this cosine of 34 over 1, and now we can use the cross products. x times 1 is going to be x, and I get x equals 17 times the cosine of 34. Now, cosine of 34 is a package deal, so you don't multiply the 17 in. What I mean is don't do 17 times 34. And at this point, we need to go to the calculator. Okay, so last time what I did is I had you go to mode and make sure you were in degree mode. You're still going to be in degree mode, so you don't have to do that for every problem. The only time you need to be concerned about making sure that you're in degrees is if your calculator dies. So if your calculator dies, then you're going to have to reset the mode. But otherwise, if it doesn't die, don't worry about it. So right now we're going to hit cosine, which was to the left of tangent. Uh, we're going to do 17 times cosine of 34. End your parentheses and hit enter. 
So I get 14.09 is what x is. So I get x is 14.09. Again, I like to do a mental check. Does this make sense? Okay, so if I do 90, or I, I'm sorry, if I do 180 and I subtract my angle 90 and I subtract my angle 34, I get this angle up here to be 56 degrees. Okay, so does our placement make sense? Well, our smallest angle is across from the smallest side. Our medium angle is across from the medium side, and our largest side is across from the 90 degree angle. So that tells us that our value of x makes sense. Instead, if we had gotten x to be 8, we would have known that we did something wrong. Um, that being because 8 would be the smallest side and it wouldn't be across from the smallest angle. So again, just make sense. Just make sure, do I have my smallest side across from my smallest angle? Just make sure that your answer makes sense. Okay, let's move on to our last example together before you guys have your objective example. So it says find the perimeter of the triangle. Okay, now remember that perimeter means that you add up all the sides. So let's write that. Perimeter means you add up the sides. Okay, so you're going to have to find both x and y. Right now, I just want you to find x. So pause the video and find x. Come back when you are finished, please. Okay, let's see how we did finding x. First thing you should have done is label your sides in relation to that 32. x is the opposite, 18 is the hypotenuse, and y is the adjacent. Now, I told you that you had to find x first. If you're finding x, we're going to use x, and then we're going to use this 18. If we used x and y, then we would have two unknown variables. Now, if I use x and 18, that's o and h, so that's going to be sine. So I get the sine of 32 equals my opposite, which is x, over my hypotenuse, which is 18. Now remember that that sine of 32 is a number, so I can put that over 1, and then I can do cross products. So I get x equals 18 times the sine of 32. If you do that in your calculator, you get x to be 9.54. So hopefully you got that right. If not, hopefully you see what mistake you made. At this point, I want you to pause the video again and find the entire perimeter. Okay, that should have been enough time. You should have found the perimeter to be 42.80 units. If you didn't, that means that you did something wrong. If you did not find that perimeter, please pause the video right now and find your mistake. If you did, you can go on to the objective problem, if you got the question right, that is. So our objective was to find missing side measures. So in each case, we first determined which sides do I have. Do I have the opposite, the adjacent, or the hypotenuse? Then we use that information to determine which ratio we should use. So your objective problem says find the area of the triangle. As a reminder, area of a triangle is going to be one-half base times height. So your triangle is upside down, but in this case, our base is B and our height is 10. You know that this is the base and the height because they are perpendicular. They form a right angle. So what you're going to do is you're going to have to find B, and then you're going to have to use this to find the area of the triangle. I will tell you that your answer should end up being 55.53 units squared. Okay, so when you come to class tomorrow, I'm going to be making sure that you have the objective problem completed with the correct answer and that you've completed all of problem three. That means in problem three, you showed the work for finding A. Good luck.